is going to increase the increase of parathyroid hormone. That's going to or the calcium. So the, the calcium gets high, so there's too much calcium in the blood, so the calcium is going to put the calcium in the bone. So calcium is going to make the And then you have the other loop going the other. So now, calcium level gets too low, then the parathyroid is going to secrete the parathyroid hormone, and that's going to take calcium out of the bones of the blood. So, just to repeat the same basic idea, calcium gets too high in the blood, calcium gets into the bones, calcium gets too low in the bones, in the blood, parathyroid hormone is going to take it out of the blood, bone into the bone. So now we're talking about fractures, there's specific ways that we're going to classify a fracture. Okay. You're going to talk about the position of the bone after a fracture. We're going to do two different terms to talk about for a fracture bone position. Uh, that's, you can have, it's, it's displaced or non-displaced. Okay. Non-displaced can be this much. Compounds only when it goes way up. Okay. So either non-displaced is where it stays in alignment. So you can have displaced is where it's a little bit off. Um, I think it's going to go through these. You might need to write them all down. It's probably out of the And then whether or not it's a complete break that goes all the way through. You, know, you can have like a green stick fracture. We'll talk about where it doesn't go all the way through. And then we'll talk about the orientation of the break to the long axis. Whether it's a long bone like this, right? It's either can be like a spiral break or a transverse or a vertical break like that. And then compound is when you're talking about whether it breaks the skin or not. So you can have a displaced fracture, but it hasn't gone all the way through to break the skin. So again, here we're talking about non-displaced or displaced. That's the main basic thing to figure out. And then you can talk about whether it's complete or incomplete. Right. And then linear has to do with the long axis. So linear, if it's going to be straight up and down, or transverse where it could be perpendicular. And then again, compounds where it goes all the way out of the skin, and then simple is going to be closed. Right? And then com commuted means that there's a lot of different parts. So it's broken up into multiple pieces. And then spiral can be where it's spiraled around. Yeah. Okay, and like I said, these aren't, we're not necessarily going to be quiz on these in the class, but it's just some of these you can figure it out if you know, understand the words, right? It's just that you know, sometimes you may talk to people that have a fracture and you say, well, you know, was it displaced or not displaced? And then a depressed fracture. So then we're talking about fractures of the skull. You can have a depressed fracture where, you know, for some reason people bang each other in the head with hammers and then you get depressed, depressed skull fractures. Okay? And then compression fractures, okay? You've probably heard of compression fractures, right? <coughs> you can either have them in the vertebra, and that's going to happen more commonly a lot in postmenopausal post females. You get compression fractures in the vascular region. Or you can have a fracture all from a muscle building or something to them. You can get a compression fracture of the calcaneus. And then epiphyseal fracture. So now we've talked about epiphysis. What, what's epiphyseal fracture going to be? It breaks off like, from the line. What's that? It breaks off in the line of... Um, yeah, sometimes you can have where it, it fractures along the actual line. And there's a specific thing that we talked about in the hip where you can have a slip femoral capillosis. So slip tells us that it's slip. Femur tells us that it's in the femur. Capital means it's like the capital of the head of the femur, so it's basically slipped. So you can have things where it's radically where it'll slip. And then epiphyseal fracture where you can actually come across like it would it would separate right here at the epiphysis. And then you could talk about fractures that will maybe go across the epiphyseal plate. And that's going to be significant or if it goes into the joint. Obviously if a fracture that goes across into the joint line is going to just cartilage that's going to be complicated. If you find a break like the leg rather than a femur rather than across the knee, the cartilage. Sorry, when old people break their hips, what are you talking about? Are they talking about? It's usually like the neck of the femur. Okay. okay there's a femoral neck, then there's a surgical neck. It's basically, I don't know how to, we might be talking more about when we talk about the femur, but basically it's usually, there's the neck, usually it's going to be in there. 
And then actually there's some pictures in there where they were talking about the chibicle and the femur and such. But sometimes what happens is that um, did someone fall and they break their hip? Or did they break their hip and then they fell? You know, because sometimes post-nephal femurs you can have weakening of the hip and they do something and twist or something and all of a sudden it just compresses or crumbles and then they fall. So here's different, um, can somebody cut the lights? We can look at some of the x-rays here. And the How much? Yeah, so commonly you didn't remember it's going to be multiple parts. And these are just pictures right out of the book. And then here's a compression fracture where the vertebra is crushed. There it is in the x-ray. And then here's spiral. A lot of times that's going to happen in the tibia. So it's kind of twisting around like that. And then here, there's their epiphyseal plate, right? So it's fracturing across the epiphysis. Okay. So you have that in growing kids, that's going to be a problem where later their, their legs are not going to grow evenly. And then depressed fracture, that times those are going to happen in the skull with head injuries. And then green stick fracture, common more in kids a lot of times. So if you ever tried to break a stick that was still green, it's not going to snap. If you break something that's really dry, it's going to crack and snap. But a green stick where they'll kind of tear on one side, but part of the fibers will still make be connected. Um, so now when we have a fracture, how is it going to heal? And again, this is just for kind of your background information so you understand the process. But it's kind of similar in any type of inflammation or, or healing. It's just like if you cut your if you cut your arm, right? What's going to happen? You're going to have a scab formation, basically. Then that's going to go in there. The blood's going to coagulate. You're going to lay down fibers, and then that's going to regenerate the scar tissue. Except the thing is with bone is that bone heals with bone, and it's pretty much those subversion systems can go in there and rebuild it, and it can get remodeled and evened out, smoothed out. But when you sprain your ligaments or tear muscles or something like that, they can't quite heal as, more, as, as much as the original equipment as bone can. But most of the time, you're better off having a fracture of a bone rather than tearing a ligament, because bone's pretty much going to heal for the most part. So what happens basically is it's going to fill in with a hematoma or a scab, and then it's going to form at that area. Then the inflammation process is going to start. So you have a hematoma, and then basically it's kind of like a scab form. So there's fibrous tissues that's going to go in there that's going to span the gap. Okay? New blood vessels are going to go in there. It's going to start to set, set the stage for it to be repaired. You know, it's like if something happens, if like a bridge breaks or something like that, you're going to have the construction crew that's going to go in there. Maybe they're going to put up a big barrier around it, and then they're going to set it some infrastructure, some scaffolding or something to try to rebuild stuff. So there's going to be new blood vessels that are going to go in there because there's going to need new blood to, to, to supply nutrients and also veins to, to take out the debris. And then the phagocytic cells are going to go in there and clean up the excess debris. And then you're going to start getting fibrocartilage that's going to form in there. Okay. So in this case, you're going to have osteoblasts that's going to form bone, but you're also going to have fibroblasts. So then it needs to form fibers in there to give structure for the calcium and the, and the ossification to be laid down. <clears throat> so then collagen fibers are going to connect the, boat, the broken ends. And then the osteoblasts are going to form spongy bone to start out with. And then they're going to start building the matrix, and that's later going to calcify. So remember, before we talked about like bones are going to have an osteoid matrix, and then that's going to go in and you get calcified. And then you're going to end up with a callus of spongy bone. But is this, this is in the long bone here. So this is diaphysis. So it's not normally going to be spongy bone. So then again, eventually it's going to get transformed back into uh, compact bone. So the first thing it does is go down and lay spongy bone just to get the process started and then it's going to remodel and it can change itself into compact bone. 